Why do we always look forward, somehow blindly bumping into the future, oblivious to how good things are? Looking for something better, blissfully unaware of the realities of the present. As a norm, I talk a lot about adding elements to my process, and not so much about the stuff I leave out, remove altogether, and completely disregard. I guess it's natural to leave these failed attempts behind. I think it's important to capture this information as it whizzes by, if only to understand how these iterative processes adapt, change over time, and how this constant addition and removal form a reliable methodology and workflow. I picked up this pendant from a friend who couldn't get it to work with the version of Linux CNC that runs on Tormach machines. I run a dual boot Mach 3 and Linux CNC. And while I don't use the Linux setup very often, I'm balancing my options again as I consider how each of these controllers will affect my future workflow. Linux CNC seems like a good contender, but the first step was trying out this thing in my existing setup. These pendants are quite popular, I figured it would be a better way to go, or at least better than my DIY Bluetooth 10 key pendant. It was quite interesting to compare the workflow between these devices. I knew that there would be a period of adjustment, but I didn't expect my current setup to be so much more efficient. I hear guys talking about setup time a lot, and a fair number of the comments I get about the complexity of my setups are in this vein. I have found an interesting angle on this issue, and it was completely unexpected. My setup time is much less, even when considering the learning curve. This new perspective brings in a fresh set of ideas that hopefully will join together the best elements of these two methods, and with any luck won't be left behind and will iterate into the future workflow. I've received the odd but gentle reminder that not everything I do in these sequences is understood. I want to take the opportunity to at least attempt to clarify a couple of these topics. If you don't understand what I'm doing, as always, please feel free to ask. I'll do my best to clarify. On the other hand, if your response is a snarky quip, be advised of my predilection for the heavy use of irony and sarcasm in response. If for no other reason, that alone should send you on an interesting trip through the comments below. I plan to go into a bit more depth about how I pre-cut the extra profile stock around the part, and more importantly, how I index and align the part again. I also hope to get into a bit more detail about how fitting an accurate neck pocket can be challenging, and if you're lucky or skilled, whichever the case may be, and get it right, the accuracy that's possible. I have the habit of trying different methods and formulating them into a standardized methodology. I constantly adapt and change, so taking these concepts as standard may not be wise. 
I generally use the tool in the first operation to cut a shallow outline around the part profile with a quarter of an inch stock to leave. Then I can use this cut line at the bandsaw to remove the extra material. I'm doing the same thing here using a marker. I've been testing this method with aluminum parts and it saves a slight amount of time spent attaching the material to the spoil board. I have no idea if this idea will stick or if I will abandon it for something better. For now, I kind of like it. When it comes to reattaching the part, or in this case, as no work holding was necessary for the first operation, attaching the stock to the spoil board for the first time, I use relative coordinates exclusively. In relative coordinates, you index the X, Y, and Z axes in relation to the part, instead of relying on the origin of the machine. In this way, I can attach the part with the center line of the stock and the engraved center line on my spoil board. It was also brought to my attention, and not for the first time, that I tend to overcomplicate things. The irony being that the comment came from something that I don't find complex at all. It's in my nature to find these complexities, and along with them, a suitable path around or through them. I have learned, and for the most part, learned the hard way, that those with more intricate understanding of a system, component, or method have unique insight into the complex issues they present. The difficult part about this is that to those of us who can be less knowledgeable, the solution may seem simple, and only with time do we find out how wrong we are. It takes time and knowledge to learn the perspective that others come from. And this effort can bear very interesting fruit, and with it, another complex point of view to look at the world around us with. I do my best to seek out a point of view presented to me, and whenever possible, respond to them accordingly. If I were a better man, I'd be able to take these criticisms from both the more and less knowledgeable, and only return positivity. Until then, my humanity will from time to time get the better of me.